and the world is still talking about Elon Musk, now Twitter's largest shareholder. But in a turnabout, Musk is not joining the board of directors, the CEO of Twitter tweeting, of course. Elon's appointment to the board was to become officially effective for 9, April 9th. But Elon shared that that same morning that he will no longer be joining the board. I believe this is best. Elon is our biggest shareholder and we will remain open to his input. Joining us now is cybersecurity and privacy uh, lawyer, expert, cybersecurity expert, Lisa Garber. Good morning, Lisa. Hi, Angela. So good to see you. Good to see you as well. Now, first, let me just get your thoughts on Elon Musk no longer joining the board of directors. I mean, what do you make of this? This is an intriguing update, but it could have the same consequences as him being on the board, essentially with some minor caveats. So Elon Musk is a huge user and a huge mm -hmm. critic of Twitter. He has 80 million followers. That's compared to a little over 200 million followers, uh, users of the platform every day, daily users. And Musk is a, what he calls an absolutist on free speech. So he's been very critical of moderation policies on Twitter. In him joining the board, Twitter had said he couldn't purchase more than about 15% ownership stake in Twitter. Now that he's not joining the board, that's up for discussion. So he may try to take over Twitter. He may try to buy more shares. Obviously, he's the wealthiest man in the world. He can certainly buy more of Twitter. Right now, he still is the largest stakeholder, but we'll have to see how this plays out in the coming weeks. Oh, so this is a wait and see. But uh, Musk has a lot of ideas. I mean, he proposed making a few adjustments to Twitter's blue premium subscription service, like adjusting its price point to $2 instead of $2.99, banning advertisements, allowing users to pay uh, using cryptocurrency. I mean, kind of walk us through this now that he's now on the board. I mean, do you think that he's going to have any influence to get some of these, these things done that he wants to happen? Musk has huge influence, whether he's on the board or not. And he did even before owning some of Twitter. Yeah. He loves taking polls and they range from the serious on how an edit button should be done on Twitter, which they don't have an edit button right now, mm -hmm. to the ridiculous. He proposed removing the W from Twitter just a few days ago. And he's really looking into how moderation works on the platform and also how the platform actually makes money. So in casually saying, maybe we shouldn't have advertisements, that actually means a complete overturning of how Twitter operates. And it could use a subscription model. That's also why it correlates to him saying maybe monthly users, super users, power users should pay a little less. He also talks about how to get that elusive blue check mark to show verification and saying you should get it if you pay for a monthly subscription. It really could turn the way Twitter works on its head. And Musk being, again, one of the biggest posters and one of the biggest critics, could certainly have a stay in what happens now that he's the biggest stakeholder. You know, a lot of people are talking this morning across the board, across the country, about his impact on free speech when it comes to Twitter and even allowing people who were banned to get back on the platform. What type of influence, what do you think he can do um, from this standpoint? What do you expect here? Musk has gotten into hot water related to moderation policies and what he calls free speech on Twitter as it is. He's said controversial things about COVID-19 and current events in the U.S. and abroad. And this is what really is worrying Twitter employees as well. Twitter has worked really hard and diligently on its moderation policies. This is a problem that plagues all social media networks, how to handle hate speech, how to handle misinformation, and how to handle Section 230 as a law as it stands for the past 30 years. With Musk coming in and saying, well, there should be quote unquote free speech on the platform, this could mean that moderation policies take a back seat. And that's what many employees are worried about at Twitter. Well, let me ask you a quick question before you leave. Um, your thoughts on the U.S. efforts to really combat Russian cyber attacks here in the U.S. The FBI recently announced they disabled some sort of a cyber bot that compromised private systems. Lisa, who was targeted for these attacks and what type of information was compromised? What do you think of this? The FBI just announced the success of a huge mission in the United States and abroad. They worked with intelligence from many other countries to tackle this huge Russian cyber crime network. This is the same perpetrator of taking Ukraine off the power grid a couple of years ago. And this actual malware looked like an update for people that owned watch guard 
appliances and also ASUS appliances. So if you operate in any of those families of devices, you should certainly check. And the FBI has notices on its website of things you should do and best practices. Basically, it looks like an update. It would get through the firewall of different systems and steal information and intelligence. And this is just one aspect of how Russians continue their cyber war operations in Ukraine mm -hmm. and abroad. Well, thank you so much. Good information there. Thank you so much, Lisa, for joining us this morning. Thank you, Angela.